fists protect you. Welcome to a very special trial. The wisdom of a leader is reflected in the greatness of his followers. Let us see if your training has truly inspired those you lead. In this trial, you will not be allowed to heal your pets. One of the marks of a great leader is the ability to lead many subjects from many backgrounds, united under one banner. Today, you will face many trainers who have honed their skills and proven themselves. Will your pets tell the same story about you? We shall see. Good luck. Hey guys, welcome to another WoW video. And for today's video, we are doing the Celestial Tournament. This is a video that I've been putting together for a really long time now. And finally, I can edit it all up and put it on the channel for you guys. So the biggest thing is the shopping list. So I have created a shopping list here. There's a lot of pets, as you can see, 29 in total, uh, minus some that you're going to need a couple of. So if you plan on going fully from my guide here, these are the pets that are all in the guide. So the Ghostly Skull, you can get that really cheap. It only costs 40 gold in Dalaran, uh, Crystal Song Forest. Uh, the vendor will be Dara here. And the fossilized hatchling is an archaeology pet. Tiny spore bat can be found in Zangamarsh. You do need to be uh, exalted with Sporagar. And then you just uh, purchase it from there. The mechanical axe beak you can get from Wad Engineering. Uh, Terra Claw Hatchling, you're going to want two of them. The reason for this is they are in two different teams. And this one drops from the Terra Claw Nest out in Talador. The Swamp Croaker can be found in Isle of Thunder. Scourge Whelpling will be over in Ice Crown in Northrend. Uh... Rough coordinates are around 70, 40. They're all over the place in that general area. Uh, next up, we have the Anvisith Idol. That can be, that is dropped in the AQ, Temple of AQ. And it's Emperor Vecklor that drops that pet. The Gilneen Raven is a vendor pet. So it's out in Darkshore. Vendor is Will Larson's. The Mechanical Pandaren Dragonling is an engineering pet, which is from the Mista Pandaria expansion. The Lesser Avoid Walker is from Tempest Keep, drops off High Astromancer Solarian. The Aqua Strider is found in the Dread Wastes, and it drops off Nalish Verdandis. Dark Phoenix Hatchling is a pet that you can buy through your guild vendor. So you just go to the city, go to the guild vendor. As long as you have the reputation, you can get this pet. Uh, basically, the requirement uh, is, although most guilds should have this, it's pretty easy requirement. Um, I actually did this achievement pretty much all by myself in the guild. I didn't really recruit the guild up yet prior to getting the achievement for it. So your guild has to have 55 unique reputations. So as long as you got at least one person in that guild that's really after rep, uh, very easy. 55 reps is not a whole lot. 
Kunlai Runt can be found in, well, you probably guessed it, Kunlai Summit. The Fell Flame is a pet battle out in Xiao Moon Valley and Tanan Jungle. And Dark Moon Tonk is, uh, well, you could probably guess at this one, it, it's in Dark Moon. So you will need Dark Moon around. So definitely if you're looking to do this soon and you're going to start prepping these pets, then you may want to remember to get the Dark Moon Tonk the next time Dark Moon rolls around, which is not too terribly soon, but we're... We're halfway through the month, so um, it, sh it should be soon. But, you know, I, I guess it depends when you watch this video. Twilight Clutch Sister is found in Bastion of Twilight, and the drop will be from Valiona. Chrominius is dropped out of Blackwing Lair, and that will be from Chromagus. Micro XD, or Microbot XD, is a junkyard tinkering pet. So you will need to have done that stuff out at Mechagon, get the blueprint for Microbot, and then you can just craft them. If you have the pattern, this is a really easy craft. Spirit of Summer is a Midsummer Fire Festival pet, which works perfectly because I'm literally posting this video a few days before mid the Midsummer Fire Festival starts up for this year. So you can soon, in a few days, go get this pet. So this might be another one you may want to prioritize. Uh, this pet will cost 350 of your Fire Festival currency. And the actual item will be called Captured Flame. The parasitic boar fly can be found in Tiragard Sound. It is a pet battle out there. Icky is actually a quest that's out in Spires of Iraq. And the quest is actually called Icky, in case you want to look it up. Sun Reaver is found in Isle of Thunder, and he drops off of the hay Haywire Sun Reaver construct. Zandalari Ankle Render is one of many pets that drops out in the Isle of Giants and he drops off of the Dynamancers. Okay, so Iron Starlet is from a quest that has changed a bit throughout expansion. So now, as of Shadowlands, to get the Iron Starlet, you will. Uh, start the quest, which is in Blasted Lands, uh, the Alliance Camp, and so this this is for Alliance side. I'm not totally sure Horde side wise, but for Alliance side, Blasted Lands, Shattered Beachhead, which is the Alliance Camp, right where the Flight Master is. You do three to four quests over there. And then you'll be sent to another camp, do another three to four quests, and it will lead you to the quest that's Report to the King in Stormwind. And voila, you get the pet. The Tranquil Mechanical Yeti actually kind of has two drops. You can get it out of a Blinktron gift pack, or you can get it the easier way, which is just by getting it from an engineer. They can craft it. The Core Fire Imp is a drop in Molten Core, drops off the Magmadar. Okay, the Rapana Whelp is a pet battle in Dread Waste. And the Pandaren Monk is a pet store pet. So that one would cost some real money, but honestly, if you're serious about pet battles, he's worth it because he solos one of the pets. And you're going to be working on this one for a while. It takes you three weeks to get each pet and you're going to go be going after four pets. If you choose not to buy the Pandaren Monk, there are ways around it, but it's just a lot easier with him. So if you have him, you'll just breeze through one of the boss fights every week. So that is the list 
Uh, I know it took a bit, but I want this video to be as thorough as possible for you guys. So I wanted you to have an idea of where you can get every pet. Uh, so I gave you the name, the location. You feel free to browse further if you need more details than that. And of course, there is the option to just buy it, which in most cases is the easier way. That way you can get your hands on a level 25 and not have to level it or use a stone on it. But sometimes some pets aren't on the auction house, right? And so this shopping list is kind of for that purpose, for that situation where you go buy pretty much all the ones you need, but maybe Iron Starlet's not on there, or maybe he's priced ridiculously, and you have a stone that you could just easily pop on him if you went and farmed him. So, so it's good for a situation like that, but if you have the money and you're willing to spend it, it definitely would be a little more convenient just to hit up the auction house and buy all these pets. And most of them are... I would say anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 on average for a level 25. So a lot of them aren't too terribly pricey. And with that said, let's get to the strategies. So I'm going to have them listed in order of the weeks and then we will do the final four bosses at the end. I will have everything time stamped. So... Uh, feel free to go through the timestamp sections and uh, that way if you're, say, on week two and that's all you care about, you don't care about the rest, you just want to see the three fights for week two, you can just timestamp to week two. What do you want, stranger? Pandaria is better. Okay, so for the Terran Zoo fight, uh, we have Ghostly Skull. You will want to set him at 212. Fossilized Hatchling, set him at 212. And Tiny Spore Bat, set him at 212. And you're gonna start with Ghostly Bite. And then you are going to swap to your fossilized hatchling. And you're going to use bone storm. And then you're going to swap back to your ghostly skull. Use your, your death quail. Basically, until Bolo casts Blinding Powder on you. And so just look at your pet buffs uh, to see if you have that. And when you see that you have that, you're going to swap back to the Fossilized Hatchling. Use Bone Storm again. And then just Bone Bite until your pet is dead. Bring Ghostly Skull back in, and you're going to do Death Coil. Once you're on the undead round, you're going to use Unholy Ascension. If there's still enemy uh, pets 
alive, then what you're gonna do is just move over to your tiny spore bat, just shadow slash to finish off Yen. Lee will come in at that point. You're gonna use creeping fungus and then just shadow slash until the fight is done. Hey yo, may your journey be long. Okay, next up we have Chen Storm Stout. And you are gonna have Mechanical Axe Beak at 121. Your second pet can be uh, Terra Claw Hatchling, and your third pet can be basically whatever you want. So you are gonna start it up with Decoy, and then use Hayfire for your second and third turn and then um, you should be on round four at this point and you can use alpha strike until the enemy pet is dead. Chirp will come in at this point and you can bring in terror claw hatchling. You could also use this as a leveling thing so you could put a leveling pet in at this point and use Terra Claw Hatchling as the last. Me, I don't like to chance things when it comes to the tournament because you can't heal your pets. So if something goes wrong, you are screwed unless you can find a backup team, which luckily I, you know, there, there have been throughout the many weeks of doing these. There, there definitely were times where I had to, you know, figure out a different strategy but I try my best to avoid those situations. So me, I kept all 25 pets. I didn't use it as a leveling. So at this point, you can just basically use whatever abilities you have on either one of your last two pets just to polish stuff off. I do not share my father's madness. Okay, next up we have Rathion. So we are going to have a Swamp Croaker at 222, Scourged Welpling at 212, and Anvisus Idol at 121. You're going to start with the Swamp Croaker. Uh, feel free to have a better one than I did, you know. I did this one perfectly fine, but this should actually show you that if you have even a slightly decent Swamp Croaker, you should be able to do this, because I did this literally with a gray pet. So, it was the only one I had at the time. And, yeah. So, Swamp Croaker you're gonna start with. Use a swarm of flies and then you're gonna do tongue lash and then bubble. On turn four, you are gonna tongue lash until Cindy is dead. Uh, Cindy will come back, so you are gonna do swarm of flies when that happens. And then Alex will come in and you get tongue lash basically until your pet dies. At this point, you can bring in Scourged Whelpling, and you're gonna use Call Darkness and Dreadful Breath until your Whelpling dies. And hopefully that ended the fight for you. If not, just bring in your third pet that's just gonna kinda polish things off and win the battle for you. And so that is your week one team 
that you will fight and then after this you will have your four final bosses that you will fight i've left that till the end i kind of wanted to put things in order so we will go over that one in the end or if you're currently doing week one as you're watching this and you just want to know the fights you need for this particular week just uh skip to the end i have time stamped everything so feel free to use the timestamps. Okay, so now we are on week two. So week two, you are going to have Wise Mary and the pets you're going to use for this one is Gilnean Raven, set him to 221, Mechanical Pandaren Dragonling, set to 122, and Lesser Void Caller, set to 222. You're going to start with your Raven, do Alpha Strike for the first two turns, and then you're going to call Darkness. And on turn four, you're going to use Nocturnal Strike, and this should kill Carp, and then Spirus will come in. At this point, you're going to swap to your Mechanical Pandaren Dragonling, use Decoy, and then Thunderbolt, and... Basically, your next turns, you're going to use Breath and Thunderbolt when available, uh, basically until this guy is dead. River will come in. And at this point, you can swap to your Lesser Void Caller, use Prismatic Barrier, then hit Pass, and then on your next turn, you're going to do Drain Power, and then you can Nether Blast until uh, River is dead, and that should polish off the fight. Okay, next up we have Blinktron 4000. You are going to have your Aqua Strider at 112, Terra Claw Hatchling at 222, and then basically you can have any pet for the third one. I do suggest a strong one because you don't, you, it is a backup pet for a reason, right? You don't want to completely rip it. Uh, so. Yeah, have someone just in case there. You're going to start with your Aqua Strider. You're going to do Pump, then Water Jet, then Pump, and then another Water Jet. At this point, Banks will come in and you should be able to get one last Water Jet off before your Aqua Strider dies. Okay, so at this point, you can bring in your Terra Claw Hatchling, do Ravage for turn 9 and 10, and then do Nature's Word on round 11. And then you get to do Alpha Strike, and then Ravage again. This should kill off Banks, but if not, you can just keep your Nature's Word up and just keep Ravaging. Little B will come in, and you're going to want to keep the Nature's Ward up, keep using Alpha Strike, 
and you know worst case scenario you could bring in your emergency pet if things go bad here Come closer, friend. Okay, next up we have Shade Master Kirin. You are gonna have your Kunlai Runt at 112, Felflame at 111, and Dark Moon Tonk at well anything for the first one, and then one two. You're not actually using the first ability, so that's why it can be anything. So you are gonna start with your runt. Do Mangle first, and then Thrash, and Deep Freeze on your third turn, and then you're gonna swap to the Fell Flame. At this point, uh, Kieran's gonna bring in Stormon, and you can just emulate, then burn, and then conflagrate, and this should kill him off, but he will resurrect, and then he dies again. And at this point, Naren should show up. And you're going to use Emulate, burn until Fell Flame dies, and then bring your Runt back in. Basically just Thrash until Naren is under 395 health. And once that is the case, you can just deep freeze. That should kill him off. And then Summer will come in. Swap to your Dark Moon Tonk at this point, and you're just gonna hit pass as your first um, your first attack. And then after that, you're gonna do Shock and Awe, and then Eon Cannon, and that should complete the fight and win the battle for you. And that completes a week two of the Celestial Tournament. So now let's hit up a week three. Greetings. Jade Serpent guide you. Okay, so for week three, we're gonna start with Lore Walker Cho. You are gonna have Twilight Clutch Sister at 112, Scourge Whelpling at 212, and then anything else for your third pet. You can pick whatever. Whatever pet you think does decent damage and would help the team. So you're gonna start with your Twilight Clutch Sister. Do Phase Shift as your first ability, and then you're gonna Tail Sweep until your Dragonkin Racial procs. This takes roughly two to three times. Then you're gonna use Twilight and Meteor with your Racial buff, and then you can Tail Sweep and Wisdom should die at that point. Patience will come in. Tail sweep and then phase shift and then just tail sweep until either one of the pets die. Um, chances are Twilight will die against patience. So at this point, basically, you're gonna bring in your Scourge Whelpling. 
uh, once, you know, once, you know, a death has occurred here. And you just get a tail sweep until patience dies. Knowledge will come in. You can just call darkness and then do dreadful breath. Uh, if by chance both of your pets die, then you just use your third pet as an emergency, you know, polish off the fight type deal. And you are... Okay, next up we have Dr. Ian. You're gonna have Crominius at 212, Felflame at 221, and Microbotics D. Uh, basically anything for the first two. We're only gonna use the last ability, so set that at two. You're gonna start with Crominius and use Arcane Explosion to start with, and then Howl. And then on your third turn, you'll use Surge of Power, and this should kill off Screamer. Chaos will come in, and you're gonna basically just Arcane Explosion until Cremenius dies. At this point, you're gonna bring in your Fell Flame. Flame Breath, then Scorched Earth, and then Flame Breath until Chaos dies, and then Trike should come in. Conflagrate, and then Flame Breath, Scorched Earth, and then just basically spam Flame Breath until your Fell Flame dies. At this point, you're gonna bring in your final pad, which is Microbot XD, and you could just use Eon Cannon. Uh, that's if you only if you needed to bring him in, uh, but if you do, chances are you only need that one ability, and uh, yeah. And that should polish off the fight for you. You got something that needs fixing? What do you need? Okay, next up we have Sully the Pickle McLeary. You are gonna have Parasitic of Borefly at 211. Icky. Uh, anything for the first one, but your last two attacks need to be at 1-1. One, one. And your third pet can be whatever, so choose whatever pet you think would help you finish the fight if, you know, the worst case scenario happens. Now, basically with this one, there are some priority attacks. If you are 800 or less health, then you're gonna drain blood. In the undead phase, you're gonna drain blood during it, but if it's on cooldown, pass. So those are the two major things to know with this fight that will help you pass this. And of course, use flurry in between the cooldowns. So, you know, just do that until the first guy dies. Okay, so Monty will come in, you're gonna do Flurry, then Lift Off, and Drain Blood, basically as soon as it's off cooldown. Uh, if it's not, just use Flurry. Ricky will come in, you're gonna swap to Icky at this point, and just do Black Claw, and then Flop. And that should finish off the battle. If not, you have your emergency pet to finish it. And that concludes week three, which also concludes all the weeks that these guys would swap out. So the important thing, just in case I forgot to mention it at the beginning, is that these are in weeks because you fight three different mobs in the beginning depending on what week you're on. So after these are all done, you're gonna be on your final phase. The final 
The final stage is always the same every week. It's only the first three mobs leading up to the final stage that alter throughout the weeks. So this next part will remain the same every week that you go. So the final stage has four bosses. These are honestly the tougher ones and really the times that I've gone unlucky have been on these bosses. So definitely there's a little bit of RNG in here, but I have tested these um, these strats and I've used them multiple times on multiple weeks. So they do work, but I'm just going to give you a little heads up here that, you know, RNG is a factor in all of it. And yeah, you, you just kind of got to kind of roll with that one. Right. So definitely be prepared. Okay, so here we have a Zeo. You're going to have Sun Reaver Micro Sentry at 221, Zendalari Ankle Render at 222, and then use whatever you have for your third pet. I highly suggest a strong pet for your third that you're not using in this tournament whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, so start with Sun Reaver, do Fell Immolate, and then Fall Lightning, and swap to your Zandalari Ankle Render. And Zandalari will do Black Claw, and just do Hunting Party, and this is gonna kill Azea. Next we have XUFU, uh, probably not said that way, but I like to say it that way. <laughs> but um, you have Mechanical Pandaren Dragonling at 211, Iron Starlet 112, and Tranquil Mechanical Yeti, uh, anything, you just need that last ability to be at 2. So to make it easy, we'll just say 222. So bring in, uh, you're going to start with your mechanical Pandaren, do bombing run, fly by two times, and then explode. And at this point, you're going to bring in Iron Starlet. You're going to wind up two times and then explode. And then bring in your tranquil mechanical Yeti and just do EM cannon. And that should polish off the fight. Next we have Eula. Eula used to be a struggle one for me. I always worried the most with her until I found this strat that works amazing. So the only pet you need here is a Pandaren Monk, but definitely don't keep those other two spots empty just in case something happens, right? So put whatever in your last two spots and you're gonna have Pandaren Monk at 222. And he can basically solo it. So you're gonna do blackout kick and then take down two times and then staggered steps and then take down and just repeat that rotation. And uh, most times, I would say 90% of the time I soloed it with just him and he stayed alive at the end. And uh, other times I needed the second pet, but never did I need the third. So definitely a nice, easy strat. 
you know, it's nice when you can do a one pet strat because then if anything bad occurs with your other fights, you've got two pets that are still good that wouldn't have been used in this strat. Okay, and the last one we have is Chi Chi. So, this one you're gonna have your Core Fire Imp at 212, and Rapana Whelp at 111, and you can put any backup pet as your third pet in the mix there. You're gonna start with your Imp, do Immolation, then Wild Magic, and then swap to Rapana Whelp. Do acidic goo, and then ooze touch twice, and dive. And that should do it. I will warn you, I've had one or two times where this strat didn't work, but most of the time it did. This is an RNG strat. And that concludes the final stage. At this point, you've completed your quest, and you can go... You could teleport out of this place and heal your pets. Don't forget to heal your pets up because you'll have a bunch of dead or very low health pets. And, um, and hand in your quest for your token. Hurrah for our new champions! You have shown your own inner strength and it is reflected in those you have raised. They are lucky to have such a strong leader. May the lessons of the Celestials light your way in the most trying of times. The biggest reason for doing this tournament is that uh, on top of an achievement, there's four pets you can Daniel. obtain and the pets all look like the final stage bosses. They're exactly, yeah, those are the pets you obtain. And you need three tokens to buy each pet, which means you need to do this for a total of 12 weeks to buy every single pet. So I hope this video helped you out, and we will see you in the next one. Good luck on your celestial tournament.